Hey guys, I figured I'd do a um, a demo video for my uh, guitar gear um, for my early Beatle covers and propositions. I did a, a demo, a two-part demo gear video for my drums for the Beatles stuff. Now I'm going to do it for the guitar stuff. Um, I'll go through the. Uh, some of the gear that the Beatles used during the early years and then I'll show you some of my well I'll show you all the guitars I've been using in my videos previously um, until now um, I guess we'll start with the guitars so we'll do my guitars uh, first guitar right here is a um, it's a Fender standard Mexican made Stratocaster I got when I was 19. I just got out of high school. Um, it's an HSS model, which uh, means it's a single coil in the neck, single coil in the middle, and a humbucker in the bridge. Uh, and the famous black and white finish, very common. Um, also, I'll tell you the reasons why I picked the guitars I did for my Beatle videos for the guitar stuff. One reason why I wanted to use my Strat was because it was the only guitar I had in the same color as John Lennon's Rickenbacker 325. So I figured black and white would uh, complement his Rickenbacker. And um, also black and white was chosen on Lennon's guitar. It was requested by um, Brian Epstein to to paint his original Rickenbacker 325 in black because it would show up better on TV and in photos, which was a very uh, interesting thing I read. I forget where I read it or where I heard it, but that is uh, a, that is a, uh, a fact that I, I heard or read somewhere. Um, I just got this not too long ago, maybe during the summertime, uh, sometime in 2019. This is the uh, John Lennon Vox Python guitar strap. It is the uh, strap that Lennon wore throughout the 64 and a little bit in the 65 tour years, probably in the studio as well. It's a really cool strap. The only thing I don't like about it is that this thing weighs a ton. This thing is very heavy. And especially when you put it on a Les Paul, it, it really breaks your back and your shoulders. But it is really cool to look at, and I figured I would have to buy it because if I'm doing the Beatles projects, it's got to be a little more legit. But it is pretty, it is pretty, uh, pretty cool. Check it out. It's the uh, strap that I've been using in every guitar video for my Beatles stuff so far, and I will continue to use it in my future Beatle recordings. Um, again, just to give off that, you know, Beatles vibe, and it's leather. And this this part is like metal. They look like scales, kind of like a snake, like snake skin. And it's metal and leather, and it's very heavy, like I said. But it is pretty cool. It says Vox. Uh, the other reason why I decided to use my Strat was because it was talked about a lot um, with the Beatles when they started looking for instruments and better gear. They always wanted, George Harrison and Lennon always wanted to use a Strat, even during the early years. Um, but back then, uh, where they lived in Liverpool, in England, um, Fender Strats were very hard to find in England. And it is a mainly a, an American-made guitar. So there was very few or no imports of U.S. guitars in England. So... That's how they ended up using uh, Gretsch guitars and Rickenbacker in the early years. But it would have been pretty cool. Imagine the Beatles playing Strats on the early stuff. It would have been pretty neat. But um, eventually they did use Strats, obviously everybody knows, in the later years. Um, but that's a pretty neat fact that I learned myself. Uh, it's a 21 fret Strat, the one I got here. And again, it's a... Fender Standard Stratocaster. It's a Mexican made from the Fender plant in Mexico. It's a HSS model humbucker, single coil, single coil, five way pickup selector, two tones, one vibe. So 
but that's that guitar. I use uh, Snark tuners. I use Snark tuners all the time for anything. Any uh, tuning or any project I'm working on, I just always go to Snark tuners. I just think they're very accurate. Uh, there's a lot of different options you can do with them, and they fit on the headstock real good. And uh, this strat does have the skunk stripe on the back, which was pretty popular in the um, 50s, on the 50 strats and in the 70s. Maple fingerboard. Uh, the fingerboard is not... Um, it's not any kind of glossy finish. It's kind of like a uh, satin finish, which feels really good. It doesn't feel glossy and sticky. Same thing the back. No gloss finish on the back. It's kind of like a, um, I'm not too sure, some kind of nitro, nitro finish or something or satin on the back. I don't know, I don't, I'm not too sure. If you know, put it in, in the description. It is a 2011 Stratocaster, by the way. Here are the tuners, the machine heads. There's the serial number. Made in Mexico. It's a 2011 Stratocaster. Uh, for all my um, Beetle guitar videos, uh, picks, I use these. You can get a good view of that. This is a Dunlop Tortex Standard USA. Uh, blue guitar pick 1.0 millimeters is the thickness um, it kind of if you look at it, it kind of bends a little bit a very very little which I like I don't want it to be too stiff and I don't want it to be too flexible uh, this is just right so I like it uh, again using guitar picks is a preference for every guitar player but that's what I use with the uh, tortoise shell on there the uh, the turtle these are known as the standard ones. I also use the purple ones. This is a purple Dunlop Tortex um, guitar pick. Um, it's a 1.14 millimeter thickness pick, which is a little more uh, sturdy and um, it's a little bit hard. It's a little bit, uh, there's no flexibility to it. It's very hard. You can't really bend it at all. This is, I use this pick for a little bit more, um, aggressive playing. Um, again, it's just a preference thing, but mostly for the, for the Beatles stuff, I've been using the blue ones. All right. Um, we'll go to my next guitar over here. This is the guitar case for, uh, the next guitar I'm going to show you. And this is my... I'm trying to talk close to the microphone so it picks my voice up. This one is the... This one is my Epiphone Les... My Gibson Epiphone Les Paul Custom Pro. There it is. in the uh, famous ebony black with the gold hardware. And the Pro models have the coil tapping which means the volume pots come up and you can tap the humbuckers into single coils um, for more of like a single coil sound a little bit thinner and then obviously if you pop them back in they turn back to the humbucker modes depending on what I'm playing or the sound I'm trying to accomplish um, sometimes I use the uh, Sometimes I pop the uh, pots for single coil sound. And sometimes I keep them closed for a more warmer, darker sound. Um, so there's one for the rhythm rhythm pickup, which would be this one, this fine knob, and then the bridge pickup. It's the bottom one. Three way pickup selector. I got this guitar, I believe, in. I got it on Memorial Day in May of 2000, I want to say 16 or 
17. I got in either, I think it was 2017 on Memorial Day in May. So it's fairly new, bought it brand new from my favorite music store down the street. Um, there it is. I'll zoom up on it. Les Paul Custom Pro. Rosewood Fingerboard. Um, the Block Mother of Pearl inlays. Obviously, they're not real Mother of Pearl, but they look awesome. They look great. They're the, again, the Block inlays. And uh, that's that. It's just your standard custom Les Paul. So, again, that's my uh, Gibson standard or Gibson Epiphone. Um, Custom Les Paul Pro with the coil tapping in a Epiphone case with a gray interior. It's like a gray, gray and black interior. Um, this is the also the guitar I used in a lot of the earlier Beatle covers I did. Um, mainly a lot of the stuff on the Please Please Me album. All the stuff that I put up on YouTube, this is guitar I'm using. Uh, I just felt that, um, again, the reason why I picked this guitar was that the color um, complemented the the sound and complemented the uniform look of the uh, Beatles. And also, it was the closest guitar I had to kind of replicate um, <coughs> George Harrison's Duo Jet by Gretsch, or his Gretsch Duo Jet which was uh, his earlier Gretsch guitar he used on the earlier Beatle years, like on basically all the Please Please Me album and a little bit before that, even on some of the Decca sessions with Pete Best. And uh, another reason why I picked this guitar is that um, the, Gibson Cus the Gibson Custom uh, Les Paul's nickname was also called the Tuxedo. And Les Paul wanted to design a guitar that... Um, was very uh, sharp looking and handsome looking and uh, a guitar that um, would uh, complement um, men in bands dressed in tuxedos, which is a proper color, very uniform. So I figured it was a good guitar to use for the Beatles stuff because the Beatles are always, you know, uh, dressed in uniforms and very presentable to a crowd. And again, about that, that was a Brian Epstein um, suggestion to the to the Fab Four to uh, dress in a way where they um, presented themselves well to a crowd. Because most bands in the late 50s and into the early 60s um, were kind of sloppy looking, dressing up on the stage. So it was definitely a selling point for, uh, for the Beatles, how they dress. They're very unique, very uniform and clean cut looking guys. So anyway, that's that guitar. Put that one away. Next guitar I got over here is my um, most recent purchase. I got this over the summer. By the way, the date today is January 4th. 2020. So happy new year to, to you all. Again, thanks for watching my videos. Um, this one here is my, again, my most recent purchase I got in July, either July or August of 2019. This is a um, Ernie Ball Music Man or a Ernie Ball Sterling by Music Man Cutlass guitar. Cutlass is the model. Ernie Ball is the company that owns Sterling by Music Man. And this is the only guitar I got where it is not a Fender or an Epiphone or a Squire or a Gibson or a PRS. This is a very different company that I looked into. And I really like the sound of these guitars. Um, and uh, it's the only guitar I got where it has the... Um, four over two machine head style headstock, which I thought was pretty cool. Again, it's a maple board, 
no skunk stripe on the back. No skunk stripe. This was a very cheap guitar, but it's one of those guitars where um, um, the quality has nothing to do with the price. I mean, the quality on this guitar, is, it's, it's excellent. I mean, it's not the greatest, but it was a steal when I bought it. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this guitar is it's got cheap machine heads. Um, it could be replaced, but not real concerned about them, but they are cheap machine heads. Um, so far, I've never had any problems with tuning or anything, but I just wish the machine heads were a little bit more, um, a little bit more sturdy than the ones I got here. There's the back. It's also in one of my favorite colors, which is uh, Daphne Blue. It's a very popular. Um, it's a very, um, I guess it's a very popular Fender Stratocaster color. And uh, the, I was turned on by the color by uh, Eric Clapton. I think back in 2010, when Eric Clapton went on tour, he played. He came out on stage with this beautiful Fender Custom Shop Eric Clapton signature Stratocaster in Daphne Blue. And he's the only guy that I know that's one of my favorite guitar players that came out on stage with this color guitar. And I was just really... Uh, I was really stunned by it. It's, it's a very beautiful guitar. It's even better in person. The color is very nice, very um, gentle looking, and uh, um, it's not a guitar you would see like your normal rock and roll guy use. But again, when I saw Clapton come out with that, I thought that was awesome, rocking out the Daphne Blue Strat. Um, anyway, this one's pretty cool. It's a five-way pickup selector, three single coils. Looks very much like a Strat, but it's not a Strat. It's not related to a Strat. It's not a Stratocaster. It's an Ernie Ball Sterling by Music Man Cutlass guitar. Sounds like a Strat. I actually like this guitar, be, be honest with you, a little bit better than my Strats. A little bit more cleaner and a little bit more crisp in tone. And it's a great guitar for Beatles stuff. Anything that's a clean sound, this is where the tone is. It's all coming out of this guitar. Not very distorted sounding. It's, it's a very clear, and especially when you use a compressor on top of the uh, on top of your effects, the um, tone comes out a lot more cleaner. Um, and what's cool about this guitar is that there's a one one volume knob and one tone. Um, on a standard Strat, you would have two tone and one volume, but the one tone pot doesn't affect the bridge pickup on a Strat. What's cool, about, what's cool about the cutlass is that the tone knob affects the uh, bridge pickup, um, which makes more sense because I can't believe how they make a Strat, but the tone pots don't affect the bridge pickup. So if it's too uh, edgy sounding and very trebly, you're going to have to control the tone with your picking dynamics or a pick, lower the volume pot or you're controlling your tone on your bridge pickup on a Strat through your pedal board or your amplifier. But on the Cutlass guitar, they made it in a way, they made it even more simpler where you can control the bridge pickup with the tone. So they have the tone pot linked or um, wired to all three pickups. It's very simple. One tone, one volume. And, if, and both pots, the volume and the tone, are wired to all three pickups which is great. You can really shape the sound how you want it. Uh, Five-way pickup selector, too. Five-way pickup selector. Um, tremolo arm works pretty good on here. Uh, I've used it a couple times just for fun. It does work. The guitar doesn't get too out of tune. Again, it's not a, um, it's not a Floyd Rose or anything, so you don't want to go crazy with it. But I highly recommend checking these guitars out. The... Again, it's the uh, Ernie Ball Sterling by Music Man Cutlass. They're really neat, really good guitars, and it's a steal for the money. And also with this, I got a Gator case. All my cases, most of my cases are Gator cases. My pedal board and my uh, soft gig bags, and I do have one hard case 
for one of my Les Pauls is a Gator case. And one of my floor toms over here is in a Gator case. Check them out, Gator cases. They make pedal boards too. Um, and also another reason why I got this guitar was uh, I was looking for a guitar with a good, clean, crisp sound. But I really didn't want to use another Strat. I wanted something different. And I found this guitar by mistake. And I researched it and checked them out. And I was very intrigued by it. So that's that. Uh, I guess we'll go to the uh, pedal board. Here's the pedal board I got. 